This bucket of parts at front of you is going to be turned into a portable camera with rails and a map box and a zoom lens and a wireless follow focus and even wireless video on today's video about assembling your lightweight camera package on 16 millimeter. So the first step we're going to do is show all the individual components and explain what they are. And then we're going to go outside and show it built. And hopefully we can identify even more details there for you guys. So you know why we build the way we build it. Now the difference between a studio configuration and a lightweight configuration is really simple. A lightweight configuration will use on 16 millimeter especially the built in lightweight rail system. So the Atons have this rail block built in in most cameras and the SRs and SR3s have a little plate that gets screwed in the front that also has that rail system as well. The reason why we like using the portable rail system is because it keeps the camera much smaller and much lighter. If you're building this up for a studio production, you use a Mitchell style tripod head to carry more weight. We would use a bridge plate and dovetail solution with a 15 studio or 19 mm studio rods and a much bigger map box. This kit could be put in the shoulder right now and that's the point. So a lightweight kit is one that can be run both in the shoulder and also in the tripod. The problem with the lightweight system is that you don't have a positive lock on the camera on the tripod plate. So here's my tripod plate. I got one screw in the tripod plate, but the bottom of the camera only has one screw as well. So what'll happen is that the camera could twist on the tripod plate. That's the downside of doing it this way. So first off, talk about the rails. Um, Aton and Aerie rails uh, are very similar. Um, these are three quarter inch thread rails that go in the front of the Aton camera and they're all screwable together. So the rails that come with the camera are all screwable together. You can use any three quarter inch system you want. Remember that it's the same as the mount on top of the camera. It's the same as the mount as a tripod mount. And basically all the thread holes in the camera are the same. So that's kind of a handy thing. Um, these are the shorty rails. These are six inch and these are three inch. And so a lot of times what I'll do is for zoom lenses, I'll just use the six inch rails and a three inch extender, the three inch extenders for the map box. And then everything else goes on here. Now, if I don't need a map box, I'm using, um, you know, a prime or something like that. Then I'll just use the shorty rails. I'll use either the, the three inchers or I'll use the six inch rails. This is our lightest weight map box. It is a four by four, which means it's square and we're shooting super 16, which is rectangular. So the problem of course, the four by four is that if you go too wide, you'll get some vignetting. Now our zoom lens here is a Canon 11.5 to 165. And believe it or not, it doesn't vignette all the way open, which is great. So these two kind of go very, very well together. And we like this kit very much. Um, the Grizzell map box is a double stage so we can run um, you know, ND filters or 85 or whatever we need. And 4 by 4 filters are a lot cheaper than 4x565, um, which is the industry standard. My bigger map box is 4x565. And because I rent cameras a lot, I wanted to have two different map boxes with two different cameras. So the 5.65, 4.5.65, I use mostly on my 35 camera. And then for 16, I use this 4 by 4 unless I'm using wide angle lenses. And if you're using wide angle lenses, I actually use a clip-on. I have a little tiny old school 3x3 airy clip-on that works for the 9.5 and 8 millimeter no problem at all without vignetting. It's pretty cool. So um, these Croizel map boxes you can get on eBay for like 300 bucks. Comes with a comes with a nice fold-up flag usually. And uh, they are again 15 millimeter portable. Um, and this assembly comes off, so you can screw on 15 millimeter studio if you wanted to. Um, they're just one piece and they're great. So that's a great thing you can buy that's very inexpensive for your camera. This is our Came TV wireless follow focus. It's a great introductory system if you want to get started and buying something cheap. I believe they're like $4.99 retail and you can buy them on eBay any day of the week because Came TV sells them from, um, I think it's from China directly to the United States for that price. Um, the only downside of the Came TV wireless follow focus is that this whole motor design is very difficult to get close to the camera. And so you have to get an extender to run some of the primes. Uh, we're working on that right now and eventually we'll try to get it working. And we'll show you a video about that when we have it. Um, I really like this one a lot um, and the motor can drive bigger lenses that maybe aren't as smooth to run and that's one of the reasons why I like this versus the smaller ones which have a problem. We were going to get a Nucleus and I've used Nucleus M's a lot and I found that the Nucleus um, can't drive some of my lenses. 
it just can't do it. It thinks it's stopping and then it goes back again because my lenses are a little bit stiff sometimes because they're a little old. This thing has no problem, just burns right through it. No problem, it'll drive anything you want. And so for me, I'm just like, yep, I gotta have something that drives my lenses and this works. Plus having used some of the higher end follow focuses, the, the 10, $15,000 follow focuses, this thing works the same. And it's even easier to use and it has no extra box in the camera or anything. So yeah, it works. This is a trans video rainbow two, uh, 5.5 inch color monitor, it's standard definition because we have a standard, defi standard definition video tap. This is the camera part of the tap. This is the electronics part of the tap. Um, this is our um, trans video transmitter for our wireless video. Um, this is a TX for transmit. They do anamorphic decoding as well. So if you are gonna use 1.3X anamorphic lenses on Super 16, it'll automatically decode that for you as well. And they have two inputs, an A and a B and a throughput. So you could run the, the wireless through it if you wanted to, but whatever. They don't take up much electricity either. I can run this, the camera, and the, the, and the video tap um, for about six or seven hours without draining a battery. It's pretty good. Obviously our magazine for a camera. Um, we use NP1 style batteries, which have D-taps on them. Um, these are made by VeriZoom, but I believe it's, it's Schwit is the new version of these. Um, they're about 169 bucks on B&H and they work really, really well. They're um, kind of chintzy and not great looking and they don't have lithium charging. They use regular charging because inside is the circuit to run the lithium stuff. And I don't expect them to last a long time, but I've been through a lot of MP1s and these are the ones that have survived the best. And so uh, I think they're called Schwitz nowadays. Um, these ones were all very Zoom ones. Our wireless transmitter. So there's our TransVideo transmitter for the cameras. This is gonna give us our wireless signal to our wireless monitor kit. Again, we have a video all about wireless video related to this camera, so check that out. And uh, it's really nice, TransVideo, can't beat it. It's analog, it's cheap. Now on this side of the camera, this is obviously our magazine. This is an extension viewfinder. We have many different types. We have even a long one that we use when we build the camera for studio work. And the extension viewfinder allows the operator to be not so close to the camera and, and look down when running it. They can look more straight on. The extension viewfinder is a little bit longer and also adds the ability to zoom into the shot to make sure the focus is dynamite and perfect. So to use this camera portable now, all we have to do is take our viewfinder off. I already got my handle on it, and all we do is just <clears throat> and now we're we're set up for a portable workflow. So this is kind of how the camera goes together in portal mode. What we're going to do in a future video is show you how studio mode works and why it's kind of a little bit more clunky and kludgy to do as handheld. But until then, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.